Hi guys, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today we're going to do something a little bit challenging. I'm going to take some dollar store dollhouse items and try and make them look expensive. So um, with the dollhouse hobby, a lot of times it's really expensive to buy all the pieces you need and make it look the way you want to. So that's the challenge. Try and take some items that don't cost very much and make it look like you paid a lot of money for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and open these guys up and kind of show you the quality that we're working with here, how it's starting out. And then after that we will get started. Um, these I bought at Dollar Tree. <laughs> I think it was Dollar Tree. And um, they were a dollar. And there were some other pieces, but these were the ones I thought I could do the best job with. So as you can see, it's just very poor quality plywood and it's not even put together all that well. It has little knobs for the handles and it's just grooves for where the drawers are. Nothing opens. It's just your basic one dollar piece of dollhouse furniture. So. Um, I'm going to come up with a few ideas and then I'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm going to pull out all these little knobs for the drawer handles. Because one thing that I can easily upgrade are these drawer handles. It won't take that much effort and it'll make it look much nicer. So several of those came out really nicely, but some of them were being stubborn. So I'm going to try and use just a little chisel. And there's some other tools if you can carefully use a box cutter. That might be a good choice as well. Just be very careful with your fingers. And I'm just going to cut this guy out. So after I have the handles removed and I've done that safely and still have all my fingers intact, I'm going to do an initial sand over where I had taken those handles out so that it's fairly smooth. And then I'm just going to sand over the entire piece because this plywood is rather rough. I want to get all the nasty little bits that are hanging off out of the way for a clean and sleek paint job. After I do my first um, sanding, I am going to put just a rough layer of white paint and you can use any color really but this is to I guess to kind of prime your wood when you're using really poor quality wood when you put the paint on it the first time it's going to raise the fibers in the wood and it's going to make everything rough again just as if you had never sanded it and so I like to put that first coat on early so that I can sand it again and make sure that when I'm putting on any extra details everything is already sanded how I like it and um, smooth so I don't have to worry about when I start painting later and then there's details that I have to sand around and that can get very inconvenient. So it's kind of like a, if you're a baker, it's kind of like a crumb coat like on a cake where it keeps the crumbs from um, showing up in that final layer, that's what this is. It kind of helps raise those wood fibers that are going to raise up no matter what you do early so that you can re-sand it and get the smoothest finish possible.
So after that first paint layer dries, you'll just be able to sand it again and this is what will give you a smoother finish on the final piece. You don't have to sand it carefully, you're just trying to get the surfaces as smooth as possible. And you can repeat this process. If for some reason you have a really rough piece of wood and it just keeps, I don't know, like the fibers keep popping up and it just looks really horrible, just keep sanding and then do another layer of paint and then sand and then do another layer of paint. I'm only going to do one on these so that you can kind of see how that looks, but um, you can do this process as many times as you need to to get a good base for turning this piece into a quality, a quality looking miniature. After you've sanded that, make sure you wipe off all the dust, and already this miniature is feeling much smoother. Previously I would have felt like I would have got a splinter if I was doing this, but now it is a much smoother texture, and like I said, that's just going to help in the end making this miniature look much nicer. So the next thing I'm going to do is use wood filler to fill in some of the gaps. So when these items are put together, they don't really think about how the um, sides are going to look. I mean, they just put it together very quickly and there's oftentimes gaps and inconsistencies where these things are put together. And so you might be thinking, well this is going into a lot of detail and it sounds really complicated, but if you're trying to up the look of a miniature, detail is where it's at. And detail is what is going to take a miniature from a, a $1 piece to something that you can put in a collection and be proud of. So this is Elmer's wood filler and I like this kind because it is in the tube instead of the little tub. In the tub it tends to dry out. In the tube you can just get out whatever you need and then you um, fill in the crack and I'll use a little spatula to fill in any spaces where I don't want there it to show that there was an obvious joint. And so that will be what I do next. So now that I have the wood fill done, I am ready to start on the drawer fronts. Now quality miniatures typically, if they have drawers or some kind of moving piece, they actually function. These drawers do not open, but we want to at least make them look like they might open. Nobody even from a distance is going to believe that these drawers will open, they're just not done very well. They're just cut along the surface of the wood and so what we want to do is I'm going to take just your regular cardstock paper so thicker than normal paper and I am going to cut drawer fronts to sit on top of here to give an illusion that there is a separate piece that could possibly it won't really but possibly pull out and um, it will look more like a uh, real drawer
after I've cut, I measured and then cut all the false drawer fronts, I'm now going to glue them together. I've cut two pieces for each drawer front because I want there to be a definite thickness and I find that two pieces of cardstock gives me the thickness that I want. So I'm going to glue those together and then I will just do a little bevel on the edge to give it just a little bit of shape and then I will be gluing them onto my onto the front of the dresser to give me that false drawer front look. So I'm now past the fixing part of trying to uh, make this the best possible version of itself and now on to the design part. One easy way to add little details is with punches and these are easy to find in craft stores um, like Michaels, Hobby Lobby, even Walmart. Um, these are so common they're easy to find and you can just find little designs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use regular paper and this is because I want it to be very flush with the surface. Cardstock is going to give it more of a bump and I want this the designs that I'm putting down to be a little bit more flat. So I'm using regular paper and then I'll be stacking some of the designs on top. This piece I'm going to make, make look more of a shabby chic, maybe a, even a child's dresser. And this piece I'm going to make look a little bit more modern, um, like something that was set out into a living room just by using strips of paper.
Once I have all the paper details applied, I'm ready to put the paint, the first paint base coat, on for each piece. finished the painting on both of my pieces and I didn't show all the painting that I did. Um, I did a few aging techniques um, and uh, it, it would make this video really long for me to show you everything that I did. So uh, if you want to see some more aging technique videos just let me know. Just basically real quick tell you what I did is I painted the base coat yellow. I went back with some watered down brown to put in these spaces. I put just a little bit of green, watered down green on these um, flowers and I just rubbed it with my finger and that made there be just a hint of green on these flowers and then I put a little bit of brown down here because I know there are going to be handles right here so it looks like the handles have been rubbing against the front of the drawer causing the paint to come off and then I just got a little bit of brown paint on my fingers and rubbed the edges and it just looks like the paint has worn off of the miniature. So that's just a quick overview of some of the painting techniques I did on this. Very simple but um, it makes it look old and when you make things look old it kind of covers up any um, anything that you don't like about it. So if you still see some of the roughness from the original poor grade wood, it kind of covers it up because it looks antiqued. So now I'm going to do the final step which is what kind of gives the miniatures character. I'm going to put the handles onto the pieces of furniture. So these are handles that I have made and if you're interested I could create a video on how I make my handles but if you are not interested in making personalized handles for your furniture you can always look on online miniature stores you could probably even go to Hobby Lobby I'm not sure if they have they probably just have like some generic handles I like to make my own because I have certain ideas of how I want them to look but um, you could also like get some stud earrings you don't want anymore cut the backs off and glue those on so there's lots of different things you can do for handles. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these guys on and then our miniature should be finished.
So that's it guys, that's the whole tutorial. I'm sorry it ended up being such a long video, but good miniatures take time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. I had a few other ideas that I could do with these dollar store miniatures. I was thinking I could pick up a few and bash them. If you don't know what that means, it means make them into something they weren't originally intended for. So maybe turn one of them into a bench or a dog bed or a TV stand. I don't know, something like that. So um, I know I've asked you a lot about videos you might like me to make, but it really helps me know what you guys are looking for. And um, you know, I don't want to be making videos no one wants to watch. So let me know what you're interested in and uh, let me know what you thought of this tutorial. Thank you so much. Bye.